best knife on my farm might not be what you're thinking. Welcome back to Target Forge. My name is Bill Rule, and I'm really glad you've joined me today. This video is a bit of a departure for this channel, but I had some pretty eye-opening learnings or observations recently about knives and their role in my life around the farm. And I wanted to share them with you because I think many of you guys share a passion for sharp pointy bits. Like many of you, I have a bunch of knives. Some useful, some pretty, some are both. Some I look at later and wonder, what the hell was I thinking? What I hadn't really noticed was that my primary EDC blade and my go-to animal disassembling knife shared a very common feature. They were both Scandi grinds. Recently, my wife did some straightening up in the kitchen and my knife that I only use for harvesting animals, this one right here, got relocated such that no one, it seems, could find out where it was. Truth be told, she's a bit of a squirrel and does not remember where she stashes stuff sometimes. So for a while, my prize tool for processing meat and fur animals was MIA. I remember a knife I picked up at the Pacific Air Gun Expo from a local knife vendor. When I looked at that knife at the show, I was impressed with the quality of the edge. It was definitely redneck sharp and shaved my arm cleanly. It was also very well made and pretty good steel from Japan. I pressed that knife, this knife, into service as a temporary substitute. As I used it on some squirrels I was processing at the time, I noticed I just was not as effective with this blade as I remembered I was with this one. It felt almost like I was suddenly clumsy skinning an animal. I fought my way through the task, but I wondered how two knives, obviously really sharp, could perform so differently. What was going on here? In that moment, it struck me. The Scandi grind. It's not just a different way to make a knife blade. It was a design evolution that happened over thousands of years in Northern Europe, where the people there used the Puko knife to not only survive, but thrive. They likely needed a fair bit more fish and animal flesh as the climate does not support a huge growing season. And it gets a lot worse as they migrated northward. This geometry evolved to be the best at what it was needed for, putting meat on the table. I never realized how much better it was until I substituted trying and tried a different knife that was perfectly sharp for the same job. It is my opinion that these Scandi grind knives all owe their pedigree to the Puko. Created by many years of carving out an existence in a fairly tough environment. The similarity of design elements are undeniable. Do you need to spend a ton of money on a quality knife? No, you don't. This martini knife is a little bit more expensive than the cheapest Mora, but nowhere near today's custom knives. But don't let the cost of the Mora factor into your judgment. They are great Scandi grind knives. And for work like disassembling game, they are outstanding. It's the magic of the Scandi grind that really matters. Here is a Mora with a trick up its sleeve. It's got a ferrocerium rod integrated right in the handle. Not what I wanna have when I'm cleaning and processing game because the knife gets really dirty, but super handy for, general, for a general camp knife and still pretty reasonably priced. My EDC knife, is a beat to heck cold steel fin wolf, a rare lock back folding Scandi blade. It gets trashed and borrowed by hands here on the farm that give it a really hard time. I had no idea how much that Scandi grind meant to the performance of a knife for a great many uses. This martini knife is only used on the soft tissues of animals. That's it. 
it's kept stropped and razor sharp. It is the tool I want in my hand when I've taken the life of an animal and want to maximize that animal's contribution to me. It could just as easily be a less expensive Mora. The grind is the same. They only differ in materials and finish grade. I wanted to share this epiphany with you and share some links to inexpensive Scandi knives that have earned a spot in my day-to-day -day life out here on the farm. The Sami people and other Scandinavian peoples were literally on the cutting edge of, well, cutting edges. Their knowledge and wisdom, it would appear, are preserved in these knives. It's not just a different way of making an edge. It's a really good way to make a useful tool that performs perfectly. Check out the Amazon links in the description below and see for yourself what a difference a Scandi grind can make for processing proper protein and hides. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more ED content like this, a tour of my air gun range bag, or other outdoor topics. Thanks for watching everyone. Be a light in the darkness. Have an awesome week.